it great once again to be in the Lord's house. It's great to come to the Lord's house and be a part of the service with you. And also, those who are not able to be here, it's good to be able to speak to them in a different way. And you'd like to read along with me, uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, uh, verse 9. Uh, we'll start reading there. Talk to you this morning, but that day shall come. Um, uh, we had a great week at camp. Uh, heard some wonderful messages at camp. Uh, uh, every year at camp, I'm reminded of, uh, of the tragedy of life because uh, after being going to the same camp for the last 25 years plus, uh, every year at camp, uh, uh, many times I've uh, either lost a preacher brother or uh, many of them are not able to come to camp no more because of age. And, uh, so uh, just ask y'all to be mindful of that uh, uh, there is a, an end coming to all. Um, uh, this text uh, speaks about God's long suffering, but the end coming anyway. Um, uh, verse 9 says this, and y'all heard me quote it before. It says, The Lord, and this is uh, 2 Peter 3 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but they all should come to repentance. Verse 10 says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervor and heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought we to be in holy conversation and good news? <coughs> looking forward, hastening under the coming day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, the elements shall melt with fervor and heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth, willing dwelleth righteousness. Let's stop there. That day is coming. First of all, I need you to understand that that day's coming despite the fact that God is long-suffering. Uh, verse 9 says that God is long-suffering. That he is uh, patient. Uh, that he is, his desire is that every soul be saved. What I need you to understand uh, is that, that the days of God's long-suffering will come to their conclusion. We're going to come to a stop, an end. Um, we just spent uh, five days at church camp, but every year it's the difficult thing is church camp coming to an end. During the end of camp, I had someone come to me and said, uh, let's just start back over next Monday morning. Because the environment of ca at camp is so conducive to people coming to know Christ as Savior. That's why in the midst of a pandemic, we still had church camp. Here's the reason why we still have church service. Because the atmosphere inside of a body of like-minded people who meet together and come together, that atmosphere is conducive for people coming to know Jesus Christ as Savior. That's true at church camp. And that is true in church services. You can get there, but you cannot get somewhere else. But that day will come when God is done. I need you to understand that God's pleasure is that all people be saved. In God's divine purposes, God's will. What he desired for every human being that's ever breathed a breath on this earth was that they repent and come to know Jesus Christ as Savior. You need to understand that. For every person that's ever taken a breath, 
That's his desire. His desire is that people come to a place of knowledge of saving power of Jesus Christ. That they come to a place that they repent of their sins and trust him as Savior. It's unfortunate that people squander away their time. Squander it away. They don't understand how long-suffering God is. Uh, it has been said that me and you live in the age of grace. And while that may be somewhat true, if you do not know Jesus, you do not know grace. The Word of God is clear that man's access to the grace of God is through the Son of God, Jesus Christ. If you don't trust Him as Savior, there will be no mercy. There will be no grace. There will be no forgiveness. The Scripture says there's one name under heaven where men must be saved. One name under heaven where men must be saved. I want you to think about this in the light of this text. God's mercy and grace. Time running out. That day shall come when grace is no more. When long suffering is no more. When God puts his will aside for man to be saved and say, it's done, it's finished. There is no more time. There is no more opportunity. There is no more uh, ability for man to make a choice, a woman, a child, to make a choice to receive the Son. I need you to understand that day is coming. I don't know what day it's going to be. Most of the time, me and you act like it's a long time off. A long time coming. I'll tell you why. If we believe that that day was coming, and it was coming very quickly, because that's, the Bible says that we are to look at it that way. Notice verse 10, it says, But the day will, of the Lord will come, and it will come as a thief in the night. How does thieves come? You know, I've been robbed several times in the night. They didn't make a point. Y'all know that? They hosted my lawnmower out of my front yard. You know, if they'd have called me and told me they was coming, it'd have been a whole lot easier on me to catch them. Right? Uh, someone stole a, a camcorder and a camera out of, out of my car in the parking lot one time. You know, if they'd have made an appointment, I could have made an appointment for them with Jesus. Y'all can get that later, right? Thieves don't make appointments. They don't let you know when they're going to show up. They just show up. Show up when you're least expecting it, right? That's why they come in the night. What do y'all like to do at night? Sleep. Sleep, right? The Bible says that we should not be of the night. We should not be uh, asleep. But unfortunately, we, we should be waiting and watching for the Lord's return. But uh, unfortunately, uh, many of us have been uh, lullabied to sleep uh, for uh, through various ways. We act like it's not coming. Uh, we are all up in arms about a virus that's going to take everybody's life, and we're not up in arms about uh, Christ may come back and it might take your loved one uh, uh, being unprepared to meet Him. I want y'all to think about which one would be worse. You dying from the coronavirus or your lost relative, <coughs> your lost friend, your lost child, your lost loved one dying without Jesus. Which one of y'all think would fare better in that deal? I'll think about that a minute. Folks, listen. This 
text is very clear that Christ is coming back. That day shall come. And the end is coming. And the end of God's grace will be here one day. And it's going to sneak up on some people that ain't ready. Ain't prepared. But it should not be you. Y'all know that? Not that you, I'm going to tell you what date it's going to be. The Word of God says we are to live every day like it's our last. I want y'all to imagine this. I want you to imagine that this is the last day you're going to be here on earth. Because the Bible says it could be. That life is but a vapor that appeareth a little while and vanish away. What would you do? Let's say if last week was the last week you were going to be here, where would you go? Who would you talk to? I want you to notice this. That he says that that day is coming, that God's mercy and His kindness is going to come to its ultimate conclusion. And then He says that day is coming, and it's going to come, and it's going to come in a way that can really sneak up and bite somebody. Deep in the night, right? And then He says that the that this dramatic event is going to come. Everything's going to be uh, melted and gone and, uh, and very quickly. And, but he asked this question, a pointed question. He said, seeing all these things shall be dissolved in light of those facts, in light of the fact that Christ is coming, in light of the fact that he's coming and, and things are going to be, uh, the grace of God is coming to its conclusion, and all these uh, dramatic events going to happen, uh, what, what are you are to be? That's what verse 11. Seeing these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought we to be in all holy conversation in godliness? Notice verse 12. Looking for the hastening and under the coming of the day of God. Looking for and hastening unto the coming day of God. Uh, the term uh, looking for. That, that's with ideal, uh, earnest expectation. Looking for something. Have you ever looked for something? Really wanted it. I know a few mamas are looking for their children Friday. Right? They've been going all week, right? And you kind of wanted them back home. Some mama actually miss their children. Some people were looking look for other things. Looking for something. Have an earnest expectation. How many of y'all ever have sat and waited on somebody? You know? How many of y'all are good waiters? I, I, I don't like being late for nothing. Right? How many of you ever waited for something with great expectation? Ordered something? But excited about it getting there. You want to see it. Experience it. Be a part of it. You know, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick it someone this morning. We came back from camp. Now, listen, they've done a great job of camp food. Great job. But I've seen a young man that had his first meal away from camp, and I thought it was going to bring tears to his eyes. The expectation of good food was met with such joy, I, I had to get a chuckle. I mean, it, 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 it was good. Oh, man, man. I remember the first, one of the first boys I took to camp that got me to laugh. Uh, I, we were at camp, and I asked him what it what he thought about camp. He said, this food up here tastes like rubber. <laughs> now, it's gotten better. They put the salt on the rubber. But that's, you know. <laughs> but listen, expectation. Me and you ought to long for and hasten to the coming day of God. Uh, this day is not a dreaded day. Uh, I ought to long for that day to come. Amen. I ought to want that day to come.
come. Uh, when uh, we've been studying the book of Revelation on uh, for Sunday school, and uh, one of the things that John, after he saw every terrible event that was going to happen in the book of Revelation, this is what he said. He said, "Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus." I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I'm, I'm done with this. Uh, uh, some things. I, I'm tired of coronavirus. I'm tired of hearing about coronavirus. I'm tired of the news about coronavirus. I'm tired of people worrying about the coronavirus. Uh, I wish people were worried as much about their loved one knowing Jesus as people are worried about their loved one catching a coronavirus. Because I can assure you the outcome of one over the outcome of the other. If you know Jesus Christ as Savior, you get eternal life. Y'all understand that? Amen. Eternal life. You have passed from death unto life. He says that we should allow this uh, thing that, I mean, the events that happened. Listen, the grace of God ended it's a, a tragedy that will occur in the lives of men. You can't imagine what it will mean for people that go out of this world without knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. Are those individuals who reach the end of this world without knowing the Lord Jesus Christ and they experience it firsthand when the Lord returns that what it meant for them not to have Christ as Savior. Uh, folks, listen. From my understanding, it, it depicts a terrible day, a terrible experience, a terrible thing. But that day's coming. That day's coming. The day's coming when your loved one will have their last chance. Last opportunity. And I have news for you. You no more know <coughs> what day that will be than you know what day the Lord will come back. <coughs> Very
seat belt in on it. Uh, we managed to survive childhood riding in the back of a truck. Everywhere. They was, uh, my mama had three boys. They was five of us in the household. We went somewhere in a single cab truck. Guess eat what? We were either piled in like sardines or we rode in the back. I mean, I think a lot of us understand what bugs taste like. At 60 miles an hour, right? The opportunity for God to It'll be done with us. It's great even before when this day comes. When it will be done for everyone, <clears throat> forever, for all time. That day's coming. It's coming. God's grace will be done. It's coming in a way that really sneak upon you like a thief. It's coming in a way that's supposed to have a dramatic impact on you as a saved person. You don't know that? That's what this text is trying to drive at. Seeing this is the way it is. What manner of persons ought you to be? His, his goal, God's goal, and the inspired writer of Peter is trying to accomplish is to get you to be everything you ought to be. I'll, I'll tell you what I believe in this present situation ought to do. It ought to make you be the great child of God. The great child of God. That's how he viewed the end. His view of the end is it ought to make we ought to become the greatest child of God we can be seeing these things or the way they are. We ought to be a holy people. A people that is prepared for His coming. A people who long for His coming. A people who hasten to it. Y'all want to, the term hasten means to run. I know some of y'all ain't running years. Right? I've been challenging Miss Juanita to do a foot race every time she'd be going to uh, all these getting all these body parts changed. Okay? I don't know if I said that the right way. She <laughs> understands. You get y'all getting upgrades. Run to something. I'll admit I'm not a runner. If y'all see me running, y'all look for the bear. Right? But in Christianity, we ought to be excited and running towards something. Not running away from it. I want you to understand that. He didn't say they ought to run away from that day of coming. He said we ought to run to that day of coming. Uh, you all notice that every movie that comes out about the end always has somebody on this earth trying to stop it. Well, that ain't hasting too soon. That's hasting away from something. Me and you are hasting to it. We ought to want the day of the Lord to come. Not because we want God's mercy to end. But we want eternity to start. Righteousness to actually penetrate every aspect of the earth. Because God is going to put something here more, better, and true. A new heaven and a new earth. Wherein dwelleth righteousness. My prayer is that you're prepared for it. You're prepared for it this morning. This morning I ask you if you'll stand with me. If you're able.